Yeah, no, well, thank wasn't. you. Thank so, you. so nice to see you. It's been a while and a happy new year. I haven't happy seen you since this year. Too. Yeah. How's the uh, house yeah, going? Tom, good. Time goes so quickly, doesn't it? Were you able to have a good rest? Yeah, I had a month off, which was amazing. Oh, that's How amazing. about you? Uh, yeah, I guess we, we like skied, we went to Tahoe, we definitely had a little bit of a time off and, you know, uh, stayed with our friends. Yeah, it was, it was nice. That's nice. I know you, you're a workaholic, so you wouldn't have had much No, I'm not. Off. No, I think <laughs> you were more of a... <laughs> or, well, or I had a month off, so... <laughs> Perfect. Uh, well, I guess we can start diving some questions. I know I see a few people join in today, so we can also do like, um, you guys can jump in if you have any specific question in any moment, um, but we just have like few questions uh, listed. We, we can go through, but the rest of the time, uh, you guys can feel free to ask any questions. Um, like the first couple questions is more of like, my questions. I'm just curious. I've been noticing you've been talking about this new like studio account on your IG and it sounded like it's coming this year. So I was wondering if you're launching a brand new uh, studio uh, or is this like a sort of like a rebranding of your current one and what are the reason you wanted to do, do that? Or like what are maybe like you're providing more services? or some reasons? Sure, so um, yes, you're correct. I am um, launching the business and taking it in a different direction. So previously it's um, predominantly been mostly myself. Sometimes, well, quite regularly I work with other team members, but usually they're brought in for special projects. It's not um, continued constant work with a bigger mm -hmm. team. It's kind of here and there with different projects and different contractors. But as the business has grown and, and as my kind of offering and the different services that I've provided um, have grown, there's a need for it to no longer be an individual. I can't serve every single client and I can't be across, um, you know, 100% of every project. I'll still, of course, be across all of the projects, but I'll be working very closely with um, someone who I have mentioned in the past, who's actually my brother, who I've done a lot of creative work with. And yeah, basically it's been in the works for a while. We've um, set up a partnership and yeah, we're launching as Modern Alchemy Studio this year. Amazing. That's so cool. I'm so excited to see like what are the more, uh, I don't know if you're providing more services necessarily or like what are like the um, project that you guys are going to do as a studio and hopefully see some of your new members. I know Ian yeah. is like all the behind the scenes type of a guy. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I think um, having, you know, more hands. Hi, Elise. Um, I think having more hands on deck and kind of being able to um, hand the reins off on certain things and, and work with trusted collaborators um, on a more full-time basis definitely will allow us to kind of share more behind the scenes, um, you know, when it's appropriate and kind of have a little bit more fun in terms of um, the projects rather than just buckling down and getting the work done. I think as well, another thing, you know, you mentioned were we going to be offering different services? It's not really different services per se, but one of the things that I'm really known for is my product photography and my photography work as a whole. But, you know, we also offer, um, you know, holistic design services from branding through to, um, you know, some web design and digital design. So there's a lot of different elements to the business that I don't usually showcase because I am so busy and I am just one person. So I think it'll be exciting to kind of um, showcase the work as a creative studio as opposed to an individual photographer. I know it's really cool because for some people um, don't know Helen as like the whole whole package she's offering. She's offering quite a few services. Um, like she, you offer, like you said, a branding design, but down to like even um, publications. Um, you yeah, do so I've, I've designed packaging. Have gone 
mm-hmm. yeah, on to do multiple print runs and, and sell really well and been on, you know, top seller lists and things. And we offer a lot of different services. And I think I've talked to you about this in the past, Claire. That's one of the things that keeps me happy and kind of in love with my job. I think if I just did one thing, I would mm-hmm. find it really monotonous and there's a lot of kind of, I guess, not pressure, maybe a lot of information and a lot of um, coaches and things that recommend that you niche down. And definitely I think that that really mm-hmm. works for some people. Mm-hmm. But I also don't think that you need to limit yourself to one particular thing. As a creative being, it's normal to grow and change and explore new things and kind of to evolve and I think that um, by doing lots of different projects and kind of working in lots of different mediums you know it keeps me really enjoying the work yeah yeah I can see that that's why you're growing and uh, launching this new essentially a new brand I'm excited to see like the you know how the brand come to life as like the visual language and uh, the message yeah it's um, it's one of those things as a designer your own branding is never finished right and I think that um as a creative person even if you offer those services to clients it's really hard to uh get to the point where you're ready to say this is done when it's your own project so it will be really exciting when we launch you know, the new branding and kind of um, have that new visual identity. And I'm really excited for it not to just be my face and be me mm. because, you know, there there's so much that goes on behind the scenes and there are other people involved with different aspects of things. And I think that, you know, it's nice not to be in the spotlight all the time, to be honest. Yes. Like Ian was painting like the backdrop you um you you did the yeah. shoot for uh, Moudelier and <laughs> like stuff like that you don't share it in your um Helen Coker's account so yeah exactly and it's always like um kind of a bit mysterious it's like my team and I and it's like oh who are they yeah but yeah I think I'm really excited to not just be Helen Coker yeah well I mean we do love Helen Coker so much but like Thank we're also you. very excited for this new brand uh speaking Thank of so uh, yeah speaking of new brand are you going to including some emotion works for like commercial clients for your new brand as like services definitely and I think that that's an area that a lot of people are experiencing growth in and it's definitely an area that I guess we're being pushed in in terms of um you know different content platforms and content channels you know video has been and and any motion really has been on the rise for quite some time I think it's one of those things though a lot of photographers who are used to just doing still work feel a lot of pressure with Instagram in particular um to you know shift towards video and I think like do it if you love it don't if you don't there's just yeah there's a lot of pressure around that but it's certainly something we will be offering and it's a growth area um, for my business and yeah it's something that um, I think you'll see more of moving forward. Do you have any recommendations for you know still life photographers who may not have um, may have like zero or start from beginning on diving more to the motion work eventually lead to a paid client job is there a particular process or do you just suggest them to like start with some more um, passion projects start practicing their skills and I definitely think starting work? yeah starting with passion projects is always you know a great way to go because you know, first and foremost, you take the pressure off yourself. You don't maybe have a set deadline, though it is good to to stick to an internal timeline, even with your own projects and book them in on the calendar, you know, to give them the space that they need. But you you kind of take that pressure off and you can have a little bit of a play and, and explore. I think really a starting point for people who haven't worked at all with motion and feel kind of overwhelmed with that is to start with stop motion gifts. I mean, you know, we've had a lot of creators, um, you know, in in my round of the courses, both courses who've looked at um, creating kind of stop motion gifts and, and looking at that. It's a way to turn your still photos and kind of 
create motion without it being overwhelming. And from there, you can also look at doing micro clips. It doesn't need to be a massive story with a with a huge timeline and you know, ten different scenes and all of this sort of thing. You can start by just doing a single micro clip. Maybe it's three to five seconds long. It doesn't have to be a lot. And you just potentially start looking at your still life setups or your photography setups and seeing what subtle pieces of motion could be added in. You don't need a lot of fancy equipment to do that. You can start with, um, you know, some entry level continuous lighting. And if you look, if you've done my course and you look in my um, course guide, you'll see that I kind of list different options for that as well. So one of the good things you can do is if you're working with say a still life setup, you have a product, you have a backdrop, and maybe you might have um, some interesting lighting going on that moves. So your tripod could be stationary, your product could be stationary, everything in the whole scene could be stationary like you would normally do. But the difference would be is you'd have a continuous light and then you'd play with the light source, either moving it or maybe moving something in front of it to create a shadow and add in motion that way. So the frame isn't moving and the camera isn't moving, but you're adding subtle pieces of motion. And that's a really good way to start including it with your normal product photography process without kind of having to do a completely different setup or, mm -hmm. you know, add in really extensive or complex motion. Totally. I think one uh, video clips you created from Modelier was exactly based off on um, just changing the light source. Did yeah, you shadow time lapse. Like colored lights? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you like just so that was different lights. Yeah, it was gel lighting exactly. And we just used gel lighting um, mm -hmm. to synchronize lighting changes with the music track. And, you know, that creates such a dynamic effect and it's a stationary product, a stationary tripod, um, you know, and then in post-production, you can look at kind of creating a false sense of movement within your framing by doing things like panning and zooming. And mm -hmm. that can be achieved um, regardless of how you shoot, but it's best to do it if you're shooting on like 4K so that you do have mm -hmm. a bit of resolution to crop into. You can right. also do things to create that same effect using um, actual tools that help you do that in camera. But when mm -hmm. you're starting out, it's really nice to be able to just play with that in post-production so that you take the pressure off the setup and everything mm -hmm. else is kind of just an opportunity to experiment. Yeah, totally. I think you good, like big, um, kind of creating a lot of magic in post production. Yeah, definitely. It's a massive part of my process, and I know um, there's a lot of magic to doing things in camera as well. And sometimes I'll play with that, but I think you know, you can kind of stretch the bounds of what's possible in post production. And I think it's just about where your comfort zone is. Like if your comfort zone is actually in the studio and kind of doing really complex setups and maybe playing with a video setup that's going to take you a whole day for a single clip because you're going mm -hmm. to try and get those effects in camera and then you'll save time on the post-production and it's really, there's no kind of um, way that's, better or more superior it's just kind of what works for you and I definitely do love playing post-production yeah totally um let me see if there's any quick questions there um does anybody so far has like any follow-up questions from what we talked about previously about starting a new brand and like motion works anyone anybody want to jump in and ask a question yeah, and I think um, you can just unmute yourself while, when you ask. while people are, yeah, unmute yourself, jump in <laughs> or type, whatever. Um, I think while people are kind of thinking about that as, as well, like if you have more complex questions in terms of um, your coursework or, you know, um, doing things in After Effects or, or specific processes, definitely feel free to reach out via DM and I can guide you through that. Sometimes it's easier as an educator to give a step-by-step -step when you're actually having the program in front of you and you can follow 
the same kind of path because something I talk about in my course as well is there's always like five to ten ways to do this the one thing you know and I think the more you kind of experiment with the program and the more experience you have in it the more you can try different methods of achieving the same result but definitely you know if you have more complex questions if anyone has more complex questions that are quite specific please feel Mm -hmm. free to reach out to me you know does anybody here in this group uh you know knows how to do like 3d modeling or like interested learn more about like 3d modelings in terms of uh, you know me I want to learn more about 3d modelings oh I, go like, away you're great at Claire it. and me always have this kind of back and forth she's like no you can do it you're so good at it and we've done 3d projects together but definitely it's something that um I'm still learning and it's such a big topic to cover and you know, I think um, there's not a lot of short courses and things out there for 3D. There's a lot of kind of more extensive courses. And like, of course, you can look on YouTube and things, but it's probably something that, Claire, you could look at if you, you know, you are interested in running. I mean, there's you know, definitely like a number of a, a couple of people I know who does 3Ds and they do beautiful work. Um, there's always a potential you know thing coming up in uh coming up in the future um but I'm curious if you like as you like what specific 3d stuff you wanted to learn because you already kind of know a lot of things you Mm, already know so much stuff I think I'd really like to understand more about liquid um dynamics in 3d there's there's Mm. so much that you can do in 3d I mean it's kind of never ending definitely like um you know modeling is one thing and like getting the lighting right is another thing but then like kind of playing with special effects like even soft body dynamics or, or cloth dynamics like I don't really know that much about everything I just kind of play and explore and see what I can get to work with each individual project it's never oh. an exact science and with the 3d work that I do I tend to um take it out of cinema 4d and then play with it in after effects to kind of adjust the final color or kind of make the the final cuts so I'm using multiple programs and layering different things to get the work done but there's so much amazing 3d stuff out there and I think in our industry in particular and for you know for everyone who's tuned in today and anyone who might listen to this recording in the future definitely invest in learning something about 3D because even if you don't use it as a standalone practice or a standalone offering, you will find that there are situations in your photographic client work where you could benefit from adding 3D elements or kind of benefit from the framework of 3D and how that works and that can influence the work that you're doing you know with your photographs so I definitely see you know in the next five to ten years that being a massive massive growth area and I know if you're wanting to be competitive as a photographer and as someone who offers product photography there are already people popping up who are offering 3D product photography where Mm -hmm. the client doesn't need to send their product to anyone so they're saving costs immediately on that they Mm -hmm. um you know once the initial modeling is done and they kind of the 3d artist gets everything set up they can quite quickly create new works or change the color of things or you know create derivative works and multiple kind of versions of a single work quite quickly so once that becomes more mainstream that's going to be really competitive for product photographers and it's going to be really hard to compete against and you know gone are the days when 3d is like cartoony and unrealistic definitely as your skill set grows you you are able to do more realistic works and I certainly don't think that I'm at a photo realistic level yet I'm, well, I'm I heading think towards your, that. Well, I, well I'm just going to interrupt you I think your 3D work is pretty realistic like Thank maybe you. it's not up to the level you want it to be but like from my eye like I feel like I have a pretty like a peaky eye I feel like they're really good um and then that's I, the reason I felt like 
I wanted you to work with you for like your uh for the 3D modeling stuff like all the stuff you just said about how amazing the possibility you could have yeah. with uh, if you have the model build it out it's just like a whole new world like what exactly. you can achieve you, with yeah. photography like you could achieve that in 3Ds exactly and like you know things like morphing one product shape for instance taking one of your pieces and morphing it into a different shape or color is like that's very possible within the realms of 3d and you can do that sort of thing using traditional um photography and you know a combination of post-production editing but 3d is kind of more efficient once the initial setup has taken process the caveat to all of that though of course is rendering and rendering takes a really long time you know I don't know what supercomputer the guys who do 3d all day are running but let me tell you I spend a lot of money on my computing systems I always upgrade everything to the highest possibility and rendering is still really slow and people I know who work you know extensively in 3d or in video any sort of video like rendering is always slow so that's another kind of caveat to that there's ups and downs of every method really yes any follow-up question about 3d modeling or how, how to get to it so far i feel like helen shared a lot of uh, her insights yeah i'll jump in um hi helen hi. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, well, first off, your work is so wonderful. So it's really awesome that you've decided to share your time and just kind of answer these Thanks questions. So and yeah, yeah. So I, I I've seen a lot of um, uh, photography groups or even people like in my own DMs that talk specifically about uh, kind of like the future of photography with three D motion or just like three D renderings in general. And so I agree with you. I think in, in the next five or 10 years, it's going to be a very competitive space for photographers who, who don't maybe necessarily have that skill. So I'm just kind of curious. Yeah. So I, I haven't dove into it yet, but it is something that I would love to learn more about. So is Cinema 4D, is that kind of like in terms of like software, where does that rank? Is that like pro user or is that kind of like, like, um, like what the free version to like a Photoshop would be like, where, like maybe you could run us through the software list of, of things that we I should be looking at. Not sure what um, like free option Cinema 4D um, operates with. I would have to look that up, but I think like it's the suggested software that I would say to start on because it's industry standard. So I would say like it's suitable for beginners through to really um high level professionals and you know there's a lot of different renderers that kind of plug in with that I personally use Octane X and that's what I would um recommend but there are a lot of different renderers that you can use with Cinema 4D um Cinema 4D and Octane X are kind of a, a you know a solid match that are used throughout the the industry and I think like it's kind of similar to if you were talking to someone who'd never really done a lot of post-production and they were like, well, Photoshop seems like, well, there's so much to learn and it's a really complex program to learn, but it's still what you should start in, right? And I guess you just kind of want to start with the basics, you know, but definitely that's a program that I would recommend for, for anyone to use, whether you're entry level or you do have a little bit more um, skill, but Again, it's personal preference. I'm sure other people who've been working in the 3D industry for longer and who have, you know, years of experience within that will have different comments to make on that. And I think that, you know, a lot of that does come down to, to personal preference, but that's certainly what I've always used. And, um, you know, there are other programs like there's like Rhino and there's all sorts of different things. Like a lot of interior designers um, do a lot of 3D work, you know, to create renderings for for designs for whatever commercial project that they have going on and there's a plethora of different um software opportunities to explore but definitely um you know cinema 4d is where i'd start for a free program if you're not wanting to kind of jump into anything paid there's one called blender which um you know a lot of people kind of start with as well so that's something to explore too I, my Very question cool follow-up question for like the follow-up question of 
Michael's follow-up question is, <laughs> do you have any, do you use any plugins to create that more photorealistic look with uh, Cinema 4D? I use lots of different um, plugins. The easiest thing might be for me to actually, um, is there somewhere that you can display a list if I send it to you after this that people can access? How can I share Yeah, I can just share it after um, when we share the recordings. Yeah, I can never remember their exact names, um, but yeah, there's so many, there's so many really valuable um, ones. Yeah. Let me think. Red Giant um, does really good plugins. Elise is saying that would be awesome. Yeah, so I'll share that, but Red Giant is a really good place to start. Um, and I'll definitely have a look at what I'm yeah. using at the moment. I have a big long list and mm -hmm. yeah. I'll send that no to problem. you today so that people can access that. No problem. Thank you so much for doing that. Um, sorry, I think I cut Michael off. Did you have any other questions besides the one Helen already? I would be curious to, to know maybe if you could quantify how many potential clients are asking for like 3D, like 3D photography or 3D like motion, something that doesn't require the physical product. Um, um, I've got to say not a lot of clients are asking for it yet, but I'm suggesting that it's a, an avenue for exploration for, for some clients in the future. And I've already started talking to some of my clients about how we can, um, you know, start to set things up over the next six to 12 months so that, you know, potentially in 2023, we can be looking at that, um, in terms of their overall content strategies, but you know, I think clients are always hesitant to change. And I think even in 10 years when there's a lot of competition with 3D, there's always going to be a place for photographers because uh, people basically just don't like change and they don't trust change. And I guess people have that perception of 3D um, being, you know, very unrealistic or kind of looking really fake or, you know, we've all seen really bad CGI and, um, you know, it really depends on the brand, but certainly I don't have a lot of clients who are kind of um, taking the lead on asking for that yet, but I have kind of done a little bit of industry research and, and looked at the different studios that are offering that. And I know that, um, you know, there's quite a few out there and, you know, they're working with really amazing brands and, and the work's incredible. So I just think it's going to be something that, yeah, some clients start asking for soon, but also um, once it gets more exposure and kind of becomes more mainstream, then, then maybe they'll ask, you know, I yeah, have that makes one sense. or two, um, bigger clients and certainly it's something that I discussed with Claire as she mentioned and we did a 3D project together and I'm not sure I think both of us were thinking about 3D I think it was kind of just a discussion that came up organically it, it wasn't yeah. sort of one or the we other but chatting. yeah and I think we were chatting just about um, working more um, uh, working uh, more together and I think I brought it up the question if it's a possible because I I know like how amazing you are even if you don't offer that yet I was just like oh can we like experimenting together and I think you've talked with Ian like we went back and forth should we do like do the project together like filming or should we do it in 3D rendering like we ended up settling down with just kind of like maybe do both. a little bit of both <laughs> yeah <laughs> which is like sucks Classic for Helen uh, <laughs> no, it didn't suck for me at all actually you know um I posted a reel on Instagram of one of the um 3D videos that we created together and I did this long caption about how as a creator and as a creative it's really important to embrace struggle and to kind of feel like you're out of your depth a lot and I talked about how I felt like I was out of my depth you know, with this 3D project with um, Moodlier because I hadn't done 3D for quite a long time, um, you know, in the interim between, I guess, when I first started playing with it some years back and kind of this was my first commercial offering 
of a 3D project. And so, you know, there was a lot of kind of figuring things out as I went along and, and you know, I just think that's a really important point as well is that it's okay to struggle and feel out of your depth because that's how growth happens. And I think that um, a lot of the time we just see the finished work and we don't know what's gone into that and we don't know, you know, what's gone wrong with things that weren't shown or all of that sort of thing. And definitely, you know, just kind of dive in and don't be afraid to, to fail really. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> And the piggybacking on the Michael's questions <laughs> that you answered as like the climb perspective of, of like the future, um, you know, 3D, 3D modeling re renderings, um, replacing potentially re partially replacing uh, actual photographies it's you've seen like I'm sure like you've seen some Ken Ephyrix um they do they hire a guy yeah. from Rush, Russia do all their CGI work from a I lot bet of the guys from Russia works. are always really good <laughs> yes and also Spain. no they are There's they're really good guys. it's like <laughs> yeah um and then 3D's the is really big in Russia oh interesting Didn't yeah know. a lot of 3D oh. artists that I follow are Russian and yeah for some reason it it does kind of seem to be um I don't know a specialty yeah, yeah. yeah. and also um uh, I also with with bigger productions or like bigger company who has a bigger budget of their you know mar marketing out of their marketing budgeting they tend to work with um for example I worked on a um a shoot with Diane um and it was for a huge uh, Chinese phone company. So they had quite big budgeting. Um, and then a lot of work is combination be between Diane shooting something and, and then they also creating something, posting in 3D. So it's like a combination yeah. of both things. The reason we don't see a lot of people asking these like, or a lot of our clients asking these is because this type of work is very involved and you need to actually have a quite a bit big budgeting in order to- That's right. And I that. think you need to be willing to make the initial investments because as I keep on kind of saying, this, the first setup and getting the first modeling right and getting the first materials right and getting the lighting right and all of that sort of stuff, that's an extensive process that kind of sets you up for future projects. And so- I think that sometimes people are unwilling to make the initial investment, whether that investment is about money or about time, because both of those things are really precious commodities, right? We could argue that time's far more precious than money. And I think a lot of the time brands aren't necessarily, um, you know, when they're small to medium enterprises or even sort of medium getting towards a larger enterprise, they're not always thinking in terms of, um, you know, content strategies a year in advance. So, yeah. you know, also, the bigger the, the business, the more you see it. But also it's a good strategy to actually for, for, for like the freelancers or the studios, because once you're creating, uh, create all the, you know, assets and then the client has to always come back because you have all the modeling stored in your computer. That's right. If you want a different deliverables, different versions, different color palettes. They always have to go back to you to ask all these deliverables. So it's exactly. sort of like and, guaranteeing the reoccurring revenues. <laughs> totally. And there's also like, um, you know, there's an opportunity to upsell on whether a client's asking for one kind of micro clip of 10, 10 seconds or 15 seconds for a reel maybe they offer that product in three different colors. Maybe it's a lipstick company that offers it in 15 different colors. There's a huge possibility to make iterations within your, um, just like you might with product photography as well, because, you know, in my previous course, I did color play with Moodle EA where we changed the colors, but in um, 3D, there's even more possibilities to make iterations, you know, not just changing the color, but slightly changing the angle, but making like a lot of kind of iterations from that one content idea. And I think that that is definitely something that's really attractive to clients and can can result in um, bigger projects because 
you can say, okay, well, the setup fee for this particular video might be this, and then the first actual file that you'll get might be this cost. But then if you want iterations, I can do them at a lower price because I'm saving all of that time. And that's really attractive. And it's a way to kind of, um, you know, stack things up on, on your client projects and, and get a bigger billing at the end. And it's advantageous for your clients and for you. And on Michael's question as well, I just, while we were chatting, I did remember that um, one of my long-term clients actually is, I mean, other clients have kind of broached the subject, but not, I guess, in a really like serious, you know, I want to move forward in this direction. But one of my really big clients who um, I've had for quite some time asked me a while ago, you know, do I offer 3D commercially at the moment? And I wasn't really offering it at that time. Claire knows I had, I had to get a new computer, things happened. Um, and I was just like, I'm not doing 3D right now. But um, I actually like ended up having to send that client in the direction of some 3D studios that I really love. And like, I don't mind about that because I'm all about, you know, there being enough work for everyone to go around. But certainly, you know, it, it did occur to me like, oh my gosh, you know, I, I may potentially lose clients over this and I am still working with that client and it's all good. I don't even know. Yeah, if always they send up. her a message or them a message be like, hey, actually we're like, we're rebranding our studio now. This is like officially offers. So they may yeah. come back. Yeah. And definitely it's something that I will kind of bring more into the forefront of my offering in the future but at the moment it's kind of just like a slow growth area and I'm working on it in the background because I think it's important to kind of have um, some good procedures in place and, and also to kind of explore doing it with different um, materials and have a little bit more knowledge about modeling and, and all of that sort of stuff and rendering and the best system to render on and all of that sort of thing because I think you have to be really good at kind of pricing your work appropriately for the market, which there's not a lot of comparison to go on unless you're talking about massive companies like Claire was saying. So I think, yeah, it's something I'm definitely exploring and I will kind of continue to, um, to build on and potentially offer as, you know, one of my more, um, you know, larger kind of services that, make up the different services that I do offer but at the moment it's kind of like it's in the mix but it's not center stage <laughs> uh, any other questions from anyone hi any questions? Okay. hello hi. I think my mic's working by now <laughs> um I was hi, it is. hello um, this is probably a silly question but in terms of like your videos and like stop motions that you do create with actual photography actual you know real life photography what do you use in terms of editing that is it like the likes of premiere pro or is it something else it's after yeah, effects after typically effects. Yeah. yeah yeah so typically i'll always edit in in after effects you know um there's the odd kind of special circumstance where i might do something in premiere pro for like a highly specific reason but you know 99.9% .9 of the time it would be After Effects. Yeah, because I've, I've never played with After Effects, but definitely trying to figure out what program, I guess, is the best one to invest in. Um, but is that you're able to kind of compile all the photos and images or videos and all those sorts of things in that program? Or is it? Yeah, more, and like yeah. you can also do, if you're doing like strictly working with, um, you know, stop motion, you don't want to learn another program. Lots of people compile their, um, their clips in, um, like their frames to make a clip in yeah. Photoshop. It's not what I'd recommend, but it's definitely something I have done in the past and you can kind of do if that's the program that you're using. There's no limit to, I guess, um, what's the right or wrong way to do it. Certainly with still frames for stop motion, if you're just kind of combining a series of still frames to create an animation, then, you know, you have a, a choice of different programs. After Effects, you know, can be great for that, but it, it's also good for more complex motion projects that involve, um, you know, actual movement as opposed to the appearance of movement through using still frames. Andrew, yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay, cool, definitely something I'll look into. Thank you. That's all right, you're welcome. Any other questions for Helen? anything don't be shy 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think that they might be running out of questions. Um, and I feel like i that's sort of all the questions I prepared today. Um, I guess any like fun or exciting um, things going to happen this year for you besides launching your studios or anything you wanna Yeah, share? lots of fun and exciting things for me. Something that um, I've implemented this year as part of my professional practice and and you know with my new team behind the scenes as we move towards launch is um four day work weeks Fridays mm -hmm. are technically still kind of working but rather than working um in the business on client projects and things like that we'll be working on the business so that's looking at continual education which I think is so valuable and important and you can never know it all um, and also just doing things, you know, like um, experimenting, having playful projects, passion projects, um, you know, playing with new techniques that we may have learned. And yeah, just working on the business and, and on ourselves as creatives, as opposed to, to being in the business for five days a week. So I'm really excited about that. It's something that I have intended to do in the past and that I have kind of half done. Um, definitely a big believer in education and it's something that I've always really enjoyed I, I love being a student and I, I would be a student forever if I could but that's definitely something that I'm bringing in in a more structured way this year so I'm really excited about that yeah that's a great tips I think we all need to like sort of like take a day off during the week and realizing like what we you know what we need to continue what part we need to continue grow and what part maybe you want to step back or you know take yeah and I think plate. even just working on kind of um assessing where you're at and what your offerings are and kind of um you know which things are profiting more which things are more enjoyable which things take the longest all that sort of stuff and I think if you're constantly like actually doing the work then you don't have any time to kind of reflect on it and you don't have any time to look at the best way forward for growth. And I think that definitely having your head down and kind of um, working as much as possible can be really great for your growth. And, you know, certainly I've gone through periods of, of doing that myself and Claire knows that really well because there's been projects we've worked on that have run way over time, like I'm talking months over time, which Claire's been so gracious about where I have just been booked like for every second of the day and just taken on way too much and had absolutely zero time to kind of sit back and, and strategize or, or do, you know, do my own courses. Like it's great, um, you know, being part of educating other people and sharing my knowledge with other people, but it's also really great for me to absorb knowledge. And, you know, I think just, going to be so nice to have that structure and kind of have that as a, a set rule and we look when things do come up on Fridays that I have to book in for client work which sometimes happens you know if there are deadlines or for whatever reason that's the day that we can get you know the best fresh fresh produce for a certain shoot or whatever it is I'll be trying to book that as a day in lieu so the following week I can you know take the Monday as well or kind of swap that day out so fingers crossed I can stick to that I'll I'll update you yeah usually you. it's usually like June or July when things start to um you know <laughs> the wagon starts to fall apart the wheels come off and I will check checking with you in July and then see how things are <laughs> yeah fingers crossed I'm hopeful and it'll be nice as I said it has just kind of predominantly been me but I have been working with different people on different projects as well now that it will be um you know myself and my brother and then other contractors on a less full-time process but you know basis sorry and now that it will be myself and someone else on a full-time basis I think there will be kind of a little bit more breathing room to make sure things like that stay in place perfect well, thank you so much for coming in today and thank you for everybody who joined this call and I really appreciate everybody uh, showed up and uh, I appreciate you, Helen, always, you know, you're great, like 
great with sharing your knowledges with us and so generous with everything thank you, you. I appreciate yeah. it and thanks everyone for um joining in and for your questions and Claire I will send you through that list of yeah. um plugins that I'm using and yeah you yeah. can go from there I'll share that in the salon well all right thank, thank you, you so much have a thank good rest thanks, of your guys. Bye. Bye. Bye, Claire. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.